So um, one thing we can look at, ladies and gentlemen, because this looks rather complicated. One thing we can also do is look for trigonometric functions that we can just multiply that would provide us to the other, um, to the other side. Again, we want the left side to look like the right side. Now again, you guys agree with me, as long as it's a fraction, as long as you multiply the same thing in the numerator and denominator, you're not changing the value of the fraction, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So let's maybe think about maybe rather than instead of multiplying by the conjugate and then combining fractions, is there maybe something we could just multiply by? Like for instance, if I have a 1 and I want to get it to sine, what would I need to multiply by? Sine, right? And well, let's think about this. If I multiplied sine times 1, that gives me sine. What happens when I multiply sine times cotangent? Cotangent's cosine over sine. So sine times cotangent would give us cosine. So just by multiplying my numerator, I get that. So therefore, let's do it to the, the denominator and let's see how close we can get here. So when I multiply this, I get sine of x plus this turns into, I'll just write it out. Um, so you guys can see how those divide out. Over here, sine of x times cosecant is 1. Sine of x times negative sine is our negative sine squared of x. And I think, oh, I like that, Sam, because that is, again, another Pythagorean relationship, which produces cosine squared. So therefore, I'm left with sine of x plus cosine of x all over cosine squared of x. Now, it wasn't that much work, right? But it was a lot easier, I think, than some of the other problems we've done, where we had to